What's up guys, Benny here and welcome to another Call of Duty Warzone video and the Season 4 Reloaded update is here with some of the biggest changes to the game's meta since the game came out. This is going to definitely change the weapons that you want to be using on a more regular basis because they've even gone ahead and changed how some attachments behave which was how we made weapons become better all-rounders and I'll be giving you some tips on how to get the most out of the changes so make sure to stay tuned. Also 76% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to the channel so make sure to subscribe and you'll get better at Warzone. I promise. Well, the day is finally here. The Growl has been nerfed, and quite drastically too. What made the Growl so good was the fact that it had no recoil whatsoever and was so easy to use at all ranges. You could comfortably take on a sniper just by tap firing and they wouldn't stand a chance as they wouldn't be able to get a shot off. But there have been three changes to the Growl to make it not as overpowered. First of all, they've put a damage range reduction. This means you're not going to be able to take enemies down at a distance as easily. Once again, helping to make other assault rifles and snipers viable. Then they've done a slight increase to high frequency recoil. This means that you'll no longer just be able to hold down the trigger and the growl won't go anywhere. It will require a bit more skill to use. But once again, for me, that means there are probably better assault rifle choices like the Kilo 141, which now behaves very similar to the growl, but has a faster time to kill because of its fire rate. Then the final change that was made to the growl in this patch is they've reduced the recoil compensation and decreased the damage range that you get from the Archangel and Nexus barrels. But what we can safely say is that Warzone will no longer be filled with just players using the growl, which can only be a good thing. But if you're looking for what assault rifle to use next, I'd definitely recommend either the Kilo 141 or the M13, which have got very similar weapon behaviors to what the growl used to be like but just not quite as powerful. But the Growl isn't the only meta weapon that got nerfed in this latest update. Everyone's favorite SMG, the MP5, has also been hit with the Nerf Hammer. Though the Nerf definitely isn't as bad as the Growl. It just makes the MP5 more of an SMG and can definitely make an argument for the Fennec or even the P90 to start being used a bit more. The MP5 has had its overall damage range decreased, but the biggest nerfs came from the 10 mm ammo, which I don't see as a huge issue as I always ran the 45 round mag anyway. But the 10 mm rounds have also had damage range reduced, long range damage reduced, and also an increase to the MP5's recoil when using the 10 mm round. So you'll probably want to keep using the 45 round mag. Personally, I'm just intrigued because no other SMGs have been buffed or changed, so it'll probably help create a bit more of a level playing field among the SMGs. Make sure to let me know which one you're going to be using down in the comments below. Now, in the Season 4 Reloaded update, not many assault rifles or SMGs were buffed other than the Growl and the MP5. Infinity Ward seemed quite happy with the game's gun balance, other than for two weapons that fall short in Warzone because of their clip size, and that is the Scar and Odin assault rifles. Like, I'll be honest, I never used the Odin because even with the extended mag, it was hard to take down multiple opponents, but there's now a real argument to use the Odin, especially because it got two buffs in this update. But one of the buffs that will definitely go under the radar to most players unless you watch this video or read the patch notes is the fact that stopping power rounds now apply to headshots. With only two weapons going from a two-shot kill to a one-shot kill. And yeah, you got it right. The Odin with stopping power rounds will be a one-shot headshot kill, which is ridiculous. Meaning, if your team ever finds stopping power rounds, whoever is using the Odin needs to make sure that they get them because it will single-handedly win you gunfights in more open areas of the map. Then there are a couple of other small changes made. The Fowl had a close-range damage shelf added with one-hit headshot kill potential, which could make it a usable gun because the biggest issue with guns like the Fowl in Warzone is they're just not consistent or have as fast a time to kill as the automatic weapons, which you're really going to want to be using. Then the AK-47 got an increased aim down sight speed and the CR-56 Amex had its damage range decreased, which is designed to help snipers perform better in long distance fights because the CR-56 was, like the growl, a bit of a beast. Well, a new sniper wasn't the only change with the Modern Warfare Season 4 Reloaded update. They've also given snipers some pretty significant buffs. First of all, the AX-50 now has an increased damage range, meaning if you're hitting those body shots at a distance, you'll be able to take players down in two shots rather than three, which does make a big difference. 
Then the HDR has also been changed to give you a guaranteed one hit kill to the lower torso at any range. This is as long as armor is broken. So what that means is you'll always be able to get a sniper kill with two shots at any distance with the HDR. And of course, a one shot kill to the head. These changes are definitely going to change the meta with more players starting to use an assault rifle sniper combo since the growl won't be as good at long range anymore. The Car 98K also got a buff, which to me makes sense as it'll help balance the Rytec AMR and not make it blatantly overpowered. The Car 98K has increased ADS speed, a small decrease to its hip fire spread, which isn't very important if you're using the sniper properly, and then it also got increased damage range. Snipers are definitely going to once again be some of the best in class in long distance gunfights, just like they should be. But interesting enough, the Dragonov also got a buff, increasing ADS speed, a two hit kill minimum, the gun recoil returns to the center more, and it also has a faster fire rate. I'll be honest, this is going to be really interesting to see if it makes the Dragonov usable because it was horrific before this update. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Also, shotgun slugs got a big buff, but I still don't think they'll make the cut if I'm perfectly honest. They've had increased projectile velocity, reduced ADS spread, added dynamic hip spread, then shotgun slugs have also had increased damage range and increased lower torso damage. So you're actually going to be able to kill someone with a pump shotgun rather than being beaten at close range by pretty much every other gun in the entire game. But for me, one of the biggest changes because it's going to change a lot of gun builds in this game is the changes made to the no stock attachment. What it'll now do is increase your gun's recoil as well as decrease your aim down sight aiming steadiness, which is going to drastically make a gun worse. So you'll probably no longer want to use the no stock on your M4 or Fennec and even the Bruin because one thing you don't want with an automatic weapon is increased recoil. You'll be better off with that loss of mobility that you gain from the no stock attachment in the first place. Something that I'm especially happy with this update because it's going to help avoid any confusion in the future if someone has a self res or if you're just asking your teammates constantly was that a wipe is that in your kill feed now once you've wiped an enemy squad you'll get a team wiped message appear in the kill feed for everyone in your squad to see this is going to be especially helpful in tournaments when you're playing at a really fast pace and when you come across two squads that are fighting each other because you'll know when one of those teams is finished it's a small update, but one that really does make a difference to your gameplay, if I'm being honest. Also, something I'm super happy about is that you'll now be a lot less likely to get the airspace to crowded notification when you go to call in your airstrike, because three precision airstrikes can now be called in at once, but within a distance restriction. This was probably implemented because of those 200 player lobbies. It's not a huge change, but one you'll appreciate when you can actually get your airstrike off to wipe a squad. Well, it's time for a change in the Gulag, and it's going to be an interesting time, and I think it could be a strange time for the Gulag, because it's now semi-auto rifles and snipers, as well as just fists and a throwing knife loadout to use. So that'll be fun to try out, but one thing I would advise, especially with snipers, is don't be afraid to melee if you can't get your shot off, because it'll be seriously powerful against players that aren't expecting it. Now, I can't not talk about the brand new Ritec AMR because it's probably one of the most exciting things with the new Season 4 update. It's described as a semi-automatic anti-material rifle. It's chambered with a 50 cal BMG for dominant long-range assaults. A 25x59mm high-explosive payload variant is officially listed as experimental that has been deployed on multiple classified missions with great effectiveness. But first of all, you'll have to complete an in-game challenge to unlock it, which is to get three quickscope kills using sniper or marksman rifles in 15 different matches. Personally, with all the buffs made, I'd recommend using the Car 98K to get those quickscope kills, as it's got the fastest ADS for those one-shot kills, it will definitely help you out. But the right tech itself also has explosive rounds, which is going to be amazing for taking out vehicles and potentially a reason to use it in Warzone over other snipers, as it could be the only counter to trophy system vehicles. But it's only a good thing that another sniper has been added into the game and by the sounds of these updates, they're going to be a lot more usable in the game's meta. Also, 200 player lobbies are now available for quads, which is amazing by the way, though contracts do seem to disappear very quickly as you do have 50 squads trying to grab them as quickly as they can. Now remember, there are still a load of updates coming to the season that we found out about recently, but they are not in this particular update. We'll be getting the new limited time modes like Juggernaut Royale, 
very shortly, probably next week or the week after. But this update has made a ton of changes. And also, if the Rytek AMR isn't a one-shot kill headshot, do you think that should be changed? Personally, I do. It's a 50 cal bullet. And I can't imagine anyone, even with armor, surviving a 50 cal to the head. So hopefully Infinity Ward make that change or there's a particular weapon build that we can use to make it a one-shot kill headshot. But... There we have it. Overall, it's a really good update and I'm excited to see how the changes change things up in Warzone. I'm really excited to use the new sniper as well as trying out the Odin to see how that fares with the changes. But let me know what you think down in the comments below and click on screen for more Warzone content and I'll see you there.